Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this session of Career Maps Live's week of National Apprenticeship Week. Uh, we're having slight tech issues, but uh, I understand that you can all see us. And uh, once we get our end sorted, we'll be able to see you as well. Today, um, we have our guest with us from UK Music, Ollie Moores, who's uh, the representative there and director in charge of things like education. We have Arit Ermind from Diva Creative, which is a fantastic organization uh, on apprenticeships in the music world. Andrew Bird, Lucy Darcy, and Leon Calvary, who are all apprentices that are going to be excited to share their stories. Just a little bit of housekeeping before we start. You'll see on the right of your screen a chat box. Thank you for joining us. Have a, a, a really great session. Make sure you pop all your questions in. Thanks, Yvette, for the tip, by the way. <laughs> Um, everybody put your questions in the uh, chat box and we'll get back to you uh, at the end with the Q&A after everybody has their introduction. Before we start, can somebody put in the chat box, can you see us all okay or um, are you seeing the spinning wheel of death? How's it looking out there? Hi everyone, um, my name's Ollie. So just to jump in Sharon, I can only see the wheel of death for a minute as well. So. <laughs> I don't know whether well, from what I understand, everybody can see us okay. So you go ahead and start there, Ollie. Okay, fine. Great. It, would it be all right if I should, should I um, introduce myself and then come out and come back in because it's quite off-putting just seeing the the, the the buffering bit. Yes. So. Why don't you do that? Okay. Fine. Lovely. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Sharon. Um, welcome, everyone. Um, it's fantastic to be here today uh, to talk about apprenticeships in the music industry. Um, National Apprenticeship Week is a really important week in, in the calendar and uh, we're really glad to be able to talk to you about um, all the work we've done and hear from some fantastic uh, apprentices, former apprentices, and also um, Aritz, who you'll hear from in a minute, who is uh, leads a specialist training provider. Um, just a minute, we're going to each introduce ourselves for a minute or two and you'll see me disappear in a minute. Once I introduce myself, I'll disappear and come back in. Um, so try and get rid of this buffering because it's quite off-putting not being able to see anyone. <laughs> um, so UK Music, what are we? We're, we're the trade body that represents the music industry. Um, that's everyone from uh, musicians to collecting societies, um, producers, publishers, managers, uh, labels, you name it, we, 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 um, we represent them. Uh, and we do a lot of work with government talking about policy issues and that kind of thing. We're also really passionate about um, the next generation so all those people watching this now today are probably thinking about going to, the to do an apprenticeship, interested in the music industry, all that kind of stuff. So um, there's loads of info we've got on our website. So um, ukmusic.org, check that out. Um, as we'll go, I'll keep reminding you, but you know, you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram, for example. Uh, we share a lot of information about upcoming events and, and just general news too about the industry, which is always useful to, to get your head around if you're thinking about a career in the music industry. Um, yeah, so there's loads of interesting stuff. Um, and what we'll do now is I'm going to jump out. And uh, if Sharon, if you wouldn't mind introducing, just sort of naming each person in turn. So they've got a couple of minutes to introduce themselves while I disappear. That would be really great. And I'll be back in a minute, hopefully, and be able to see you all. OK, thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Well, I'm really pleased that you guys can see us. And uh, but at the moment, we can't see you. So if we're all looking like we're staring off into space, bear with us. But we are here and we are live. We'll start this morning by um, introducing each of our guests. We'll tell you who they are, a little bit about themselves and their journey to where they are. So we'll start this morning with Arid. Hi, Arid. Thank you for joining us. Oh, hey, Sharon. Good morning. Can you hear me OK? I can indeed. Yeah. Brilliant. Hi, um, everybody. I can see there's 544 people in the room. Um, so yeah, my name is Arish and I'm the founder and director of Diva Apprenticeships and we um, deliver apprenticeships in the entertainment industry. So that's film, TV and um, the music business and we, the apprenticeships that we focus on are um, business administration, junior content producing, digital marketer and um, and um did i say junior content production then <laughs> now i don't know all of my programs business admin junior content producer digital marketer and broadcast production assistant and we recently merged with all spring media um, which is another creative industry provider to make us bigger and better okay thanks all right well, i'm back now which is fantastic news i can and i can see everyone so it's even better 
Sorry, that was quite off-putting then. I'm sorry if I was waffling. I literally fact, just... I'm going to do the same, Ollie. I'll be back in a second. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you very much. Brilliant. So, who, so Ari, you've introduced yourselves. Yeah. Uh, who, is there anyone else done it yet? Or shall I just go around you all? No? Okay, mm-hmm. fantastic. Uh, Andrew, can we go to you next? Hello, uh, I'm Andrew Bird. I'm a business analyst at PPL. I got my job through an apprenticeship with Diva. I did the level three business admin apprenticeship. Um, that was great. I got given my full time role at PPL in 2019, I believe. And what PPL do essentially is that we collect licenses from uh, venues and places where they play music publicly. So, like Asda, for example, your local nightclub, and then we'll find out who gets paid the royalties for performing the songs. So, we're not rights holders, that's PRS. Um, yeah, we're. Ooh, just broken up performers, essentially um, like the main vocalists the backup session recording artists so on and so forth so that's a little bit of what i do great thanks andrew and ppl um are one of uk music's members um and if you want to find out more about any of these companies look at their website and look if you look at our website you'll see all our members um and it gives you a good, really good understanding of what the music industry is and a lot of, sort of stuff in the uk um lucy we'll come to you next please Hello, um, hi everyone, I'm Lucy. I did a level three business admin apprenticeship. Um, and while I was studying, I worked at Universal Music in the licensing department, which basically means I worked on albums such as um, Now That's What I Call, blah, 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 or um, things like that, getting copyright um, permission from like artist managers, sometimes artists working with different labels. And then, um, yeah, I studied alongside that. And now I work at, over at Abbey Road um, at the studios as part of the Institute. And I do um, social media marketing, admin, some website work, all of that stuff. Um, and the Institute is basically where people come and learn uh, sound engineering and music production from all the wonderful people at Abbey Road. So that's Fantastic. Cool. Abbey Road, of course, a very famous studio. Um, I'm on the cover of uh, in the name of one of the Beatles albums. So do check it out. Um, very interesting. Um, thank you very much, Lucy. Um, and come to Leon, finally. Hello. Yeah, thanks for to Career Map and uh, for hosting and UK Music for um, as well. So I'm, I'm Leon. I'm a sync manager at Centric Music, which is uh, an independent publisher. And I've been there for six years. My first year of that was a music library assistant uh, in an apprenticeship role. And uh, Centric started out of Liverpool, which might explain my accent roughly. And it now employs people from all over the world. Uh, the sync team which I work on is uh, I day to day I pitch artists and their songs to match various bits of media so that might be tv or film advertising and even games as well so it's really exciting to work with uh, you know diy artists or bands that have just started way up to you know recording artists on major labels and classic songs and stuff like that and sync and publishing is is not something that i was familiar with before starting as an apprentice as well so i kind of started at a completely blank slate um, so yeah, that's me. Great, Th- thanks, Leon. That's great. And an important point, I guess, from all of these roles that you've heard about, um, there's loads of different jobs in the music industry that you wouldn't necessarily know about. And once you start getting into it, you'll find lots of opportunities um, and loads of different ways to go. Um, it was mentioned earlier um, before we started that some people might not even know what an apprenticeship is necessarily. Um, so maybe myself and Eric could just super quick sort of summarise it. I mean, Eric, what would you say? It's, it's, you're an employee, aren't you, basically, with, but you get some training. Is that pretty much correct? You earn while you learn? Yeah, basically. So, um, yeah, he, that's essentially it. It's a job that's underpinned with some training. Um, and you you work towards a formal apprenticeship qualification, which um, is 
a level three qualification at least if it's with us but you can do um, apprenticeships from GCSE level all the way up to master's degree level um, Andrew and Lucy did level three apprenticeships which is the equivalent to, to two A levels but yeah it's you're getting paid to learn basically in some really good companies great thanks and uh, yeah it's a really interesting interesting model isn't it and and I mean I, I've seen you come into our office a few years ago didn't I and you used to hold sessions there with your your trainees you, yes. you build up quite a good relationship with them don't you I mean you know I don't know you have to ask them Andrew and Lucy <laughs> they'd be better off please answering that question I think we do I think we do our best I mean my job really is to go out to companies in the entertainment industry and say hey that job that you have can it be an apprenticeship and then they say yes if I ask nicely and then I say to like Andrew and to Lucy and the rest of the younger generation hey do you want to do this apprenticeship and they say yeah wicked how do I how do I do it and I tell them how to apply and then we train them up but whether or not we do that really well you'd have to ask Lucy <laughs> and Andrew. <laughs> and it's interesting two of the three apprentices here work at the company where you did your apprenticeship as well I mean that that's something that happens quite often I understand so yeah really good yeah, relationship between employee and employer yeah I mean you can never guarantee like we, we we can never guarantee one that the apprentice wants to stay there or two that the employer um will be extending the contract beyond the apprenticeship but we have a very high um turnover of um of um apprentices that are kept on after their apprenticeship because Fantastic. we try to pick companies that want to offer that yeah. job either within their in that department or somewhere within their business hey, it's brilliant and I mean you people watching will notice there's a very strong business leaning and the, 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 the you three apprentices here today obviously working very much on the business side I'm um, just just a flag I mean there are obviously opportunities in the live music side at side two live event rigor that kind of role so I mean just, you can go you register don't you Eric if, if you're watching this and you're interested in an apprenticeship you register and then you can search for yeah for if yeah find an apprenticeship website so if people google find an apprenticeship website they can um register there because most providers will advertise their apprenticeship vacancies on find an apprenticeship website i think andrew and um lucy did you find your apprenticeships there on the finding or national apprenticeship service website it might have been called at that time to yeah. apply through there or um we also advertise our apprenticeships on indeed as well so people can find them there or follow us on on our socials um on instagram at diva apprenticeships and twitter at diva underscore creative and and you'll we put them all out there as well great brilliant okay brilliant so let's um move a little bit we talked a little bit there about how you can find the opportunities obviously there there are jobs and you can find them on apprenticeship service where you have to register um to come into the apprentices now um the former apprentices sorry um, how did you get the role and have you got any tips for people who are thinking about looking for and applying for roles and how did you find the process was it more, was it just like a job in job job process was it your first ever job you went for that kind of thing be really um, interesting to hear Go on, Lucy. Um, so I had previously I'd worked in just like bars shops that kind of thing and I was so interested in getting into the music industry but obviously it's so it's it is quite difficult and um, there are a lot of people that have a lot more experience that have got degrees that have done all this stuff and I hadn't gone to university and I kind of thought um how am I going to do this I'm going to have to find an alternative route basically and so I kind of oh Andrew can't hear me can can you can everyone else hear me yeah, yeah. oh okay um um, so yeah, I wanted to find an alternative route and I was kind of Googling like other ways to get into industries or with no experience and and like I, I prefer like practical learning and I came across um, like I think it was just the the website that um, Arit mentioned and I saw this opportunity I thought oh my god I'm gonna have to go for this it's perfect and I found that it was kind of a different process than a job application which I'm obviously have done in later years um because it was kind of less focused around experience and kind of like why are you passionate about music why do you what will you get from this role and you had a real opportunity to kind of like sell yourself and sell like this like your creative skills and your personality skills and those kinds of things um and once once past that point yeah it did kind of become like 
like a job interview and um right. and yeah it was yeah it was a really good good process for sure Cool. So it helped that you had a you, you demonstrated your interest in in the the area, which is a really important thing. I think people often forget about, it, don't they, when they're going for a, yeah, a for sure. I think it's easy to just go for the kind of I work well in a team, um, I'm hard working, and it was kind of just a different opportunity to go. No, I haven't got any experience in this, but I'm super creative. I know whatever I put my head down to do, I'm going to learn it because I'm passionate about music. And it's a great opportunity to show, like, say, for example, I'm an artist, so I can go, hey, I've, I've done these gigs, these festivals, and here's my music as well, and, and kind of, um, like, show other sides of your personality because, um, yeah. Yeah. Great. So they're really sort of investigating you, you as a person and you've been able to give some some to other context like like you say you're an artist too really gives it some some depth as well which yeah. is brilliant. Le yeah fantastic leon how about you in, in centric because i mean we met many years ago um and centric have, have always been a great employ employee employee haven't they around apprenticeships so how, how did you find the process and um and any any tips for anyone looking to apply for an apprenticeship yeah i totally agree i was in a similar position you know with regards to ex you know experience as well and um, yeah my first point would be you know seriously consider uh, an apprenticeship because I've built a career out of it um, and you know experience is kind of used as like a depreciative term sometimes but I think like the quality of work that Centric offered me was was really good um, and what I was able to produce was was good as well so even if I sort of hadn't um, been offered a full-time position after that year I think that would have been like seriously valuable for me, like moving forwards. Um, in terms of how I found uh, the job, it was actually the uh, National Apprenticeships website, which I think is just Gov UK now, and they have um, lots of creative positions to to look at and uh, a big span there. Um, so, uh, it th this these positions at Centric. I was in the sort of first round of apprentices that came through the creative employment program, which somewhat kind of subsidized um, employment for people in the creative industries. Uh, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have a job if it wasn't for that. Um, so, you know, absolutely. You know, do your research. Creative Society is still going as well. They have a website and I think UK Music, you, you work with them. Um, and yeah, you'll be surprised how much of a range there is in, in uh, the music industry as well. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks, Leon. Yeah, but, um, yeah br br brilliant that you, you've been there and it really helped form your career. It's, it's fantastic. I mean, just just to jump quickly to, to our example as well, UK Music, um, your apprenticeships are really, really great and they can really start you on, on your career path. So we've got a former apprentice, Beatrice, who, who joined us, I think, studying the Community Arts Management Apprenticeship. And she's amazing, isn't she, um, Arit? And, yeah, and gosh, she saw an opportunity. Years. She loves she loved design, and she just like I said, look, can I do a bit a bit of the design work? Can I learn a bit while I'm working here at the apprenticeship for whatever it was? Initially, it was just going to be a year. I'm guessing around about a year. Um, so she started taking on that responsibility, and now she is our design officer. You know, she does all. You'll see if you look on our website, you'll see all our reports. She does all the design for all that, all of our campaigns. You know, she had a logo she designed and uh, projected onto the House of Commons recently. You know, it's, it, it's, it's fantastic. And she's, she started off, and she, uh, what made me remember this was she, she told me the other day she started off in a coffee shop and didn't really feel like she was getting anywhere and wanted to wanted to sort of really challenge herself and found an apprenticeship. Um, Andrew, how about you? I mean, we were just talking about um, any tips. How did you find your apprenticeship? Obviously, you, you, you were with um, Dave, I believe. But, I mean, any, any tips on people looking to get an apprenticeship and and then the process, the interview? Um... And, yeah like, uh, yeah like the other two said going through the national apprenticeship website is a great place to find opportunities but um a bit more technical than that i'd have uh someone like your parents or maybe a teacher at school check over your cv make sure it's tight because at the end of the day it still is a job um so that's what i got i got my hospitality teacher who's like a very good people person good at writing cvs know what employees want to see <laughs> and she went in did my cv for me made it look good i love that um 
<laughs> yeah, so that may, yeah. so that I that hopefully you know she might have helped me secure my apprenticeship, made me stand out from the crowd, um, um, and yeah, during my interview process as well, which I had, it wasn't is not even though it is a job, it they weren't testing me on certain criteria, so they weren't it weren't like oh how good are you at Excel, how good are you at Python? Obviously they asked these, but they didn't they don't expect you to be amazing because obviously you're going to learn on a job so you, really you kind of just have to show a more willingness to learn rather than oh no i'm good at this i can do this i can do this because i thought i was good at this coding language called python but when you actually get into the real world where people are dealing with this stuff on a day-to-day -day basis <laughs> you're not as good as them so you just kind of had to put you out there put yourself out there to learn more than anything i'd say yeah nice. No, I but, think that's but, really good. Sorry to jump in, on, Ali. Yeah. I was no, just going to say just on there, because we, we we read thousands of CVs and applications every every year. I mean, well, put it this way, we did recruitment for BMG over the summer and we had over a thousand applications. And I think what Andrew's just made a really good point is get someone to check your application because it's just when you're reading a lot of applications you will swipe on those where there's lots of errors so basically getting someone to have a check-in and um, I think it's important also to somebody put in the chat do you have to have um, like music experience and no not you a passion and an interest for music but you don't have to we're not looking for artists or for managers this is it's like the back end of the business so the marketing the accounts the the um, business development everything that you find in any other industry is in the music industry as well in terms of jobs so I think it's important to be able to demonstrate your passion for music whether that's just oh I go with some gigs or I you know I, I follow these bloggers or whatever in your CV does help definitely and and it's a really important point there as well to just pick up on that and it is a it's a proper you know industry everyone sees the fun side the, the gigs the, the festivals the performances there's so much hard work and expertise that goes into all of this you know, business skills coding skills you know, live skills technical skills all this kind of stuff it's a really serious business so there's lots of fun to work in i hasten to add but it's a really serious business underpinned by a lot of hard working people so you know be hard working it's a lot of fun find find your niche um and another point I just wanted to make super quick, because sometimes to get into the industry can be quite difficult, as Andrew alluded to, and, and I read with a lot of applicants, a lot of people want to, want to work in the music industry. I'd say with the music industry, it's probably just good to get your foot in the door because, you know, you'll get known. It's quite a small industry. People will get to know you if you're good. You know, you'll be able to move around. And apprenticeships are a great way to do that. That's a really good way to get your foot in the door. I mean, we've got three excellent examples here today of people that got their foot in the door with an apprenticeship and are still there doing it and, and, and enjoying it and really growing their careers. So so really exciting to be able to talk to them today. Um, I, I'd love to pick your brains a little bit about, you talked about the sort of the learning side and, you know, and Python, wasn't it, Andrew? You talked about learning more about Python. Um, what are the benefits of, of starting as an apprentice? I mean, wider than that, did you feel sort of brought into a team? Leon, I know Centra is a really good sort of, ethos around supporting apprentices along how did you find was that a benefit did you, would you say did you feel nurtured uh, yeah I think there's a little bit more time to bed in sort of initially um, rather than if you're going into kind of a, a fixed position um, so I had like just the benefit of time to understand the company um, you know there's still that absolutely expectations to to work hard and complete the work that you've you've been assigned um, but also maybe um, not as much of an expectation to kind of actually pitch in so you, if you do have a creative mindset and you do really get to understand what's going on and you listen then you know towards the end of my year as an apprentice I was able to kind of make some like minor you know innovations and contributions to the team that were really valued um even if it's kind of quite a minor thing you know one of them was you know uh, i ended up kind of just doing an email roundup every month of what i was listening to that was on our catalog and my favorites and the songs and a bit of information uh, about those artists and i sent those to the two guys that I was i was working with at the time uh, even if it's you know 
something like that. And I think, you know, with that extra time, you kind of get a bit of room to breathe as well. So it's not as daunting as just, you know, throwing yourself into something. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So you, you sort of done, you, you went a little bit beyond. So, so you didn't feel pressured, which is great, but you also went a little bit beyond. So you took the initiative, which is what I mentioned about Beatrice earlier. And would you say that's, that's important, Leon, in terms of like, you know, furthering yourself? Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, I, I did feel noticed as well. And I think appreciated as well. Um, as I said, kind of, you are expected to do the work, but uh, you are noticed if you go the extra mile. Yeah. Hey, um, and I, uh, and can I just, just jump in there because there's a couple of comments uh, relating yeah. to this that popped up, up during the chat. We had quite a few people saying um, things like uh, technology um, in, uh, you know, doing apprenticeship in technology in the music sector. And obviously the more strings to the bow you have makes a difference. Uh, conversely, there was also a couple of questions about can you become an artist through an apprenticeship? Um, and I think that that's something that we, we need to kind of be truthful about. There's not a way to become a rock star, um, but then having a, a different sorts of uh, qualifications and going for different types of apprenticeships, particularly if you're tech, could no, help. Do you want no, to answer no. this, Eric? Yeah, I mean, we've had, I've, I can hear feedback. Can you hear that? Or is it just me? It's gone now, yeah. All uh, right, okay. Yeah, we've had artists who've, who've um, um, done apprenticeships with us before. Um, and they have, I think, I think it's about if if you're clear that you want to be an artist, then stick to the artist route and focus on getting your work out there and building relationships with managers and producers, etc. Um, the apprenticeship, depending on the apprenticeship that you do, so you have to because each apprenticeship is underpinned by by a job. So um, if you are doing, say, I don't know, like a, a digital marketing apprenticeship and you're an artist there is certainly going to be some things that you're going to learn that will inform your understanding of how the music business works how digital marketing works um but it's 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 not an artist apprenticeship do you get what i mean so i think it just depends on where you're at in your journey as an artist if you are at the point where look i just want to really learn about the music business and and get immersed within the culture and meet people and network and i can commit to doing this apprenticeship for the next 15 months then do it but if you're like oh the apprenticeship is just my like little side hustle and i'm trying to get in there so i can get my work you know this at universal music oh my gosh i'm gonna no it's not for you because you're going to get frustrated the employer is going to get frustrated because your direction is natural your direction of travel is firmly rooted as an artist so it starts with you and what you want to get out of the apprenticeship and whether or not you can commit to the role as it is for the period of time mm, i'd agree with that but i'd also just jump in and say um there's a lot i mean it was mentioned earlier about someone mentioned the, the term diy artists which is the do it yourself you know there's a lot more onus on the artist now to get themselves along to a certain point and also the fact that a lot of people in creative arts have portfolio careers so you may not just be doing one thing and music might be your passion so i mean you, you may take on an apprenticeship to support you while you're trying to get the break and, and obviously it's a bit but i think it's better to be working in the industry as i said you get to know it you get to know the culture get to meet people so it, it depends on who you talk to around yeah that and i think it also depends on your it, it, it starts with the individual and it also yeah. the employer because if you're an artist trying to get your stuff trying to get your work signed and all of that and you're speaking to your employer about it some employers get hacked off because you're yeah. here to be a digital marketer yeah, so yeah. you must let it yeah, sorry. Aris, yeah, sorry. I think it's the balance. It's about making sure it's about, OK, so I've committed to this job. You might in your evenings and networking be using that time to build your network and all of that. But your day job is your day job. Yeah, very important. I would agree with that. that goes with everyone, I think, on any apprenticeship that you do. And I, and I don't think we can stress enough that it is a job. So even though you might have a day job working in a pub right now, you're not going to be talking to your bar manager about what gigs you can do. You're there to do the job and pull the pints. But it doesn't mean that at the weekend or your time off that you're not recording or, you know, performing even if it's online uh, and pursuing your passions that way. But you do have to respect that it is any job. And if somebody's employing you to do something, whatever job that is, that's what you're employed to do. Um, but following on from that, I think it's really good because we've had a couple of questions in there about apprenticeships. Again, 
Um, I think it's it's really important that we do come out of this explaining about apprenticeships and the fact that it's a job, but learning too. And um, we've had a couple of people asking, what happens when you finish your apprenticeship? Does that mean you get the job, as it were? Right. In, great, because that, that, that was my next question too. So I'll let everyone explain their own experience. But I mean, the apprenticeship, and Eric can correct me if I'm wrong, is for a set amount of time. It's like a fixed contract. Sometimes you'll be offered another role afterwards. Sometimes you won't. Um, but often you'll find, and I shared the stats um, just the other day in a, in a piece I wrote, um, the, the percentages of, of people staying on at companies where they start as an apprenticeship is really good because you've built a relationship. You know, the employee and the employer have built a relationship. So obviously you're, and it's about getting your foot in the door again. You know, two of our three apprentices here today were able to stay in the company they, they were in. And Lucy managed to move on to another equally as good company. So, you know, that that is um, important to flag. Who'd like to jump in with their experiences? Okay. Lucy. Well, actually, Abbey Road is part of Universal Music, so I'm still in the same yeah. Yeah, company. Yeah, same general. Um, yeah. But I basically, like you have been mentioning, I saw this opportunity as like a perfect networking opportunity. And... And like you said as well, there are so many different jobs that you have no idea what they are. You probably have heard of like A&R and like those ones, but there, there are hundreds of different roles. So while I was doing my apprenticeship, I made sure to speak to like as many people as possible. I met the people in HRs, which is saying hello, like being friendly, talk, like asking people to have a coffee and learning about what role they do, um, just so I could get feelers out for what I wanted to do. I also made sure to like immerse myself in any like, extracurricular activities like I joined the charity committee the LGBTQ committee all of those things and then when it came to the end of my apprenticeship I kind of had an idea of what I wanted to do and I thought oh I want to do like marketing something a bit more like creative I made sure to um, check in with the HR department like regularly and see if there was anything coming up and um and just kind of built friendships everywhere so actually when it came to the end of my apprenticeship hr approached me and said there's this job come up you're coming to the end of your apprenticeship um we think you'd be great for it um so for tips basically it's just be as friendly as possible make as many friends as possible and just like keep your eyes peeled like be very proactive in like forming those relationships and and like looking and searching and and then you and then you get something for sure Definitely. Brilliant. Anyone else would share their experience? I think I would echo what Lucy said, make the best use of your time while you're while you're there, because, you know, the majority of employers, insofar as the apprentice hasn't been a liability um, and have done a really good job, would like to extend an offer to that apprentice because you've you've you spent the last 15 months um on that placement and so there's an investment on both sides and you've got used to doing the role and they've got used to having you in the role um so the transition into employment is that is that much higher but equally so you might want to look at working at different companies um so doing what lucy suggested do networking means that you at least the benefit of an apprenticeship is, is that you know there's an end date so if you know that actually i want to move on after this then you can prepare for that you know then that last three three months of your apprenticeship by meeting with other employers or whatever so so yeah but do network and make yourself known um following on with some of the questions on the uh, chat um is that we've had quite a few questions about uh, students who are currently college students doing music courses uh, and I think we need to be clear about if you do an apprenticeship and do have certain qualifications, what the uh, limits are on the types of apprenticeships that you can do or the opportunities, depending how you want to look at it. Uh, we also had uh, an, a question about a degree apprenticeship um, and uh, the uh, choice of doing a degree apprenticeship versus university. Uh, Eric, do you want to say that one? Um, what, the degree apprenticeship versus university? Yeah, that one. Uh, yeah. Fine. We can we can start with that one, and then there was one about a couple of people had mentioned that they're doing currently are enrolled yeah. doing college courses that are music related, yeah. and then mm -hmm. asking about doing an apprenticeship. Ah, yeah, uh, right. Just, okay. Yeah. Is there a conflict then? Is 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 that? I mean, and I then think, if, even if you're able to, because there are some. Yeah. Um, yeah. If limits, you are, aren't there. Yeah. So I think I'll, I'll start with the college one then. So if you're at college and you want to do an apprenticeship 
that's fine. It, insofar as you, the the, the um, apprenticeship program isn't the same as what you did at college. So if, for example, you're doing music production or technology at college, the likelihood is there isn't an apprenticeship um, program in music production and technology. So when you're, I think, just based on some of the questions is that asking which apprenticeship is best for me it's it's a job so you're looking for the job that's best for you and then underneath that is the apprenticeship program so if you get onto the find an apprenticeship website and look for a job basically um and then for those who are referring to degrees, you can do an apprenticeship if you've got a if you've got a degree. We have apprentices who are graduates. What you have to bear in mind, there's two things: is that again, the apprenticeship program can't be in the same qualification that you did at university um, and also it is a level down from your degree so your degree is like a level six qualification your um, apprenticeship would be most likely a level three so you have to be mindful that there will be some things new information but there will be some things that you might already know so again it's commitment it's about understanding that actually this employer has offered this as an apprenticeship so I am committing to doing this as well as the course of study because I think one of the things that frustrates employers is if you have a graduate who just wants to get into the industry and just do the apprenticeship as a as a way to get in but then doesn't want to do the apprenticeship they just want the job the two go hand in hand so it kind of starts with you really in understanding that I am committing to another form of study for the next year that will most likely get me employment in a way that my degree has not. Definitely and just to pick up on that a little bit um, the, the, one of the questions was around um, mixing and mastering something you like to do and and that there, there isn't currently an apprenticeship in that but we are helping develop one that is already live actually it just hasn't had the funding bands um, sorted out so you can go and look at it um look on the institute for apprenticeships website if you go if you google i think it's called the assistant recording technician standard google that then we've helped develop that with a lot of studios and producers so that should be live sometime very soon so that's exciting news especially if you enjoy um that kind of working in the studio sort of thing and and, and mixing and, and and all that kind of stuff well not, not mixing but you know recording recording and um, bands and stuff which is the precursor to a lot of different uh, careers in, in the industry. Okay. We've got a really qu interesting question that just popped up by Erin if you want to have a look, but if you can't see it, I'll read it out. Erin works with young offenders and we have a lot of young people that enjoy studying and recording music in custody and hope to use a way out of crime. Is this realistic for them to have their talents interested and with business and marketing roles, which we did have a couple questions about those sorts of roles in particular, uh, what's available. Do companies have a blanket stance but they will be taking a chance and I think not just talking about young offenders but um, perhaps other people that may have been in care or you know as a, as a way out of some kind of cycle. Yeah I mean I, I, it's an interesting question there and yeah thank you for that and I used to work with um, excluded teenagers too you know lots of lots facing lots of difficulties um, uh, youth offending uh, team in my local council used to have now called um, different different name now but um, yeah I mean it, music is a is a fantastic way to help people uh, sort of express themselves and and uh, challenge themselves and deal with issues and 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 I, and I, I mean Arit might have an opinion on this but I mean I don't think anyone ever have, have a blanket view on ex-offenders it's, it's not it's not within you know it, it's an elite it's illegal to not accept someone's application I believe because they're an ex-offender yeah I mean I, I think um, for me and for us as an organization you know people you've done your time you you it's you know you've served your time it's done you want to move everyone's entitled to a second chance so I don't I don't we don't as, a, as an organization we certainly don't have a blanket ban on ex-offenders we just welcome people as long as you meet the, the the requirements you can you complete a good application you will be you know referred in line with any other um candidate I don't think we ask for that in we don't ask for that information I don't believe we do on our application forms. Um, we work with organisations who support young carers as well to get into into employment. Having been in the care system myself, I understand that you know the challenges that come with that. So I'm not really here for stopping people from having a second crack because you mm -hmm. made a mistake. It's like no, there's not a blanket ban as far as I'm aware. Great and. Um... 
changing kind of not, not, not in the flow of the conversation, but um, there have been a lot of questions about the different types of roles that are available for apprenticeships. And um, I did want to say, you know, within our experience, uh, and we're talking business, non and tech roles and IT tech uh, as opposed to uh, as electrical tech, um, that you could have a, a real um, passion and talent for that and get to work in the music industry exploiting that uh, but they're asking uh, and I think Lucy touched on this you just don't actually know what kind of roles there are you don't know what you don't know so it's very easy to say I want to be this and there might be something different that actually is better suited how do you go about uh, fishing around and finding the kind of information besides reading Career Meg with a feature from Harley, <laughs> and, and uh, he, he did spend quite a lot of time, which you can see online. But, um, but as Lucy said, with networking and other things, what what's the best way to actually see what's out there besides? What people do? Yeah, well, before I'm mean, be great to hear from the former apprentices on this, but just before we do, um, check out our website. I mentioned earlier we have a website, UKMusic.org. We've got a career pack on there. I mean, it's fun. It's amazing the amount of jobs that, that exist, you know, all roles, you know, and, and amazing the amount of opportunities that are there. In terms, and, and as I'm sure, as I think at least two of our three apprentices here today have said um, they didn't know the role existed when they took on the apprenticeship. You know, and I'm the same. I, I didn't know UK Music existed six years ago. I, I didn't know I could combine my experience of working with young offenders, as 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 Aaron said, um, experience of teaching at uni, and my community work. In it and my musical sort of background in, in a one job I had no no idea that existed so you never know what's out there and networking is key as Lucy said and it'd be great to hear what Andrew Leon and Lucy think about about that brought more broadly don't be shy <laughs> um, so yeah I think networking is definitely key oh sorry um, can I have a summary of that one more time please uh, I've had my brother put the kettle on. So I, <laughs> I told him not to. I love that. <laughs> Can you repeat your question for Andrew, um, Ollie? Just a s summary. Well, I, I was, um, Sharon, you, you had the original question. Yeah. So uh, we had a lot of people asking about um, different roles and just what might be obvious for people who have, let's say, a limited knowledge about the type of roles in the music sector. But these include things like not just producer or songwriter, but also things like tech or uh, business and other business roles. And of course, we always say at CareerMap, you don't know what you don't know. Um, so how did you go out and find the, the range and uh, the different types of roles that, that you have seen? Well, when I was applying for my apprenticeship, I pretty much applied for everything I saw out there essentially just to put my foot in the door get a good working job you know um and yes that being said um you've got to keep your options open you can't really uh have tunnel vision on one certain job because if push comes to shove and you don't get it and you're not flexible that you could take that really badly you know um yeah that, and that could maybe uh, hinder your whole career potentially if you're just like oh, okay i want to do this job um it, and that's just the nature of the world uh like so you, say you want to be a football player for example non-music related if you get kicked out of an academy or whatever you can't you know you can't let it get you down you've just got to go and apply for other jobs you know join the um so yeah that's basically that's all i've got to say really just keep your options open don't be tunnel visioned because it could bite you if you don't get what you initially wanted and it, yeah i think, I think that's like, excellent advice yeah and following that like what you say you don't know what you don't know you also don't know what you're going to be good at until you do it as well like i had no idea what licensing was it's basically part of like the legal team and i thought if you told me that before i probably thought oh god that sounds so boring it was actually so interesting and i found that i had a skill for it and i think that will apply to loads of different jobs as well and because i knew i had an end date i was always kind of searching on different labels and like websites for jobs and literally just reading the job descriptions and then learning about different roles and like thinking like oh maybe I do have like a skill here or there that I could apply to that and so it's just kind of like a good place to start maybe like thinking oh okay I want to work for Universal like always check their website and like read the different roles and think like oh could I do this but it's 
yeah, a good way to learn, I think. Yeah, that, that, mm. that's a great thing to do is just re- read job roles, you know, look at companies you like, follow companies you like on, on, the, yeah. on the social social networks. Pretty good. And this conversation reminds me of something I wanted to comment on earlier with Leon. You said when, during your apprenticeship, you used to write off your own back. You used to do little summaries, didn't you, of, of the, 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 the tracks coming through which is fascinating because then you moved on to sync, which obviously you need to understand the music and be able to sort of think where things would work. So in a way, you almost pr- predicted where you might go or certainly helped, helped yourself along, would you say? Yeah, yeah, I think I'd, the only thing I'd add to those, you know, other two contributions is there's definitely s- stuff that you can do before you're in a job. Like if you're interested in, say, being a music journalist, then, then write. You know, even if it's not for something, write about what you're interested in and, you know, it might not get published or might just be for your own sort of personal development, but you should definitely do something that you can do. And if you can't do it, then research. Um, Before I started at Centric, I read loads of articles, read the website. I read an interview from a boss who, um, you know, uh, interviewed me and I was quoting back stuff that I'd learned during that um, and and yeah he was really in, impressed with that so, so like one of the questions was like what do you do in a day so I like knew bits of what the job already was uh, before I'd even done it and I was able to ask about it mm-hmm. so you know if you get to an interview stage as well don't, don't be afraid to kind of ask you know what is this job and, and have an understanding of it um, and hopefully you know it'll you'll be offer a, a real chance to, to do some some good work Great, yeah, and I just add to that I think ask yourself what are the things that you like to do so if you're someone who's like always on your socials you love creating content then maybe you know you're you're more on the creative side and doing something because I can see Stella and Lydia have asked questions around business related roles and um and sellers doing something in media and film so if you're more of a creative then doing an apprenticeship say as a business analyst might frustrate you because you you want to be creating content or, or doing marketing so in that sense look at apprenticeship roles that are more geared towards that line of work so if it's marketing then you might end up doing a digital marketer apprenticeship or junior content producer or broadcast production assistant whereas if you know that actually I'm the organizer I like to be um you know I I can organize you better than you can organize yourself I like the data I like the detail then you might be much more on the administration side you might get involved in events you might be assisting an A&R manager or you might be do you know what I mean so we have our job roles can vary we recruited for promotions um, assistants who are working for um, for radio promo companies we've recruited for administrators and legal teams licensing teams within sync we've um, have lots of digital marketers and content producers so it's better as somebody just suggested earlier just to get on the find an apprenticeship website because it is a job first and look at the jobs and does this job sound interesting to you and then ask yourself why is it interesting to me and then write that down oh because I like the idea of being able to do this I like that why is it not interesting to you oh I hate spreadsheets I'm crap at maths and then you separate them and then you just because when you get a list of the things that you like then it's it's more of a template for what you're looking for um, and then you can maybe start to apply for roles that are down that that track um, but that's that's the best way of finding like the different jobs because even if we said them you might not know what they are do you get what I mean we'd have mm-hmm. like what is promotions what is so it's better just to go online and, and have a have a little look and uh, Eric, could you take that a step further? Because we talked about CVs and your your view of receiving CVs. Have you got some nice hints and tips for people following on what you just said when they're writing their CVs, when they're actually yeah. applying for a job that you would tell them that do's and don'ts? Yeah. Um, you- 
okay so tailor your first one tailor your cv to the job so it's not a generic one size fits all cv it's a bit like matchmaking so the employer says i want to see good organizational skills like they usually list we want you to have good organizational communication team player it's very generic so in your cv you want to demonstrate through action how you've got your team working skills so for example at college you might have been as part of your course you might have all had to make a little short film and making this up or record a track you would say you would give that as an example and tell us the role you played in the team not just i have great team working skills because that doesn't mean anything to me when i'm reading that i want to see an example of that um so so show me don't tell me is the message and the second thing is if you've got like passion is demonstrates itself in, to some form of action so rather than say I'm passionate about music just tell me about the gigs that you go to the musicians that you like to listen to who you follow on Twitter which blogs that you read because then I can see that's your passion um, even if you think oh if you've not worked in um, an office or you've not worked in the music industry that doesn't matter if you've had a job like in McDonald's, don't leave that off your CV because that's your currency. That's all you've got. So tell me about your customer service skills. Tell me uh, it's an opportunity for you to demonstrate you worked in a team. It tells me that you've got into the habit of getting to work on time, all of that. So all of your volunteer experience is relevant, especially when you're young and you're just trying to get in there. So many people miss that off their CV, but it's kind of all you've got. So use it. And your job is to tell me how it transfers skills are skills so if you've got customer service skills in mcdonald's you've most likely got them when you come into an office as well so just transfer those skills into don't leave them off your cv um and lastly go onto my youtube channel there there you have it <laughs> just put my name into youtube and i have a youtube channel it's got loads of loads of resources on how to apply for jobs how to answer interview questions how to figure out what you want to do go on that <laughs> great uh, Aaron, do you want here. to pop the YouTube yeah i was just going to link that. into the chat and, yeah, um, and while you're doing that, that ollie there's a couple yeah. of questions that were quite yeah. um specific that i think is important to cover about apprenticeships sure. um is there sure, an I'll age see. that you need to be Go on, go there's go a go couple go questions for this. So there's the age range of going for it. Um, uh, what is the money like? And then also, um, it, we've had a couple of people saying, when's the right time to apply? Now, I think that's kind of generally, we talk about roll on, roll off, but I think there's also uh, one specific question is that I'm at college, when should I apply? Oh, I was just, I was just replying to that one in, 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 the, in the chat. You might have heard me typing. Yeah, so, so okay. that one, I was just saying, um, I was just replying that, um, if you're at college at the moment, I, I, uh, probably around about a couple of months before you leave, because there's usually a good month that, that, that it'll take for them to process the applications, and a good then you can use it up to about a month is normal for a start. Um, there'll often be, and correct me if I'm wrong, Eric, there'll often be a job start date on a lot of um, job jobs um, details. Not all, um, but the, but I mean, you, you need to be able to commit to it. So you don't want to be applying six months before you finish college. But you also, when you know you're coming to the end of your course, you'll know, you know, a couple of months, I'd say, is probably fine. Um, and that salary, I mean, there are there is an apprenticeship wage. People pay differently, though. You know, um, some companies will pay the the, the living wage. Um, it, in London, there's a London living wage. Some will, some will pay that. Um, it depends on the employer. Again, it's, it's very specific to each apprenticeship. Often they are, I mean, if you look at the apprenticeship, rates on the government website the rate for an apprenticeship is lower um, um but obviously um hopefully the employer will be paying you more because you'll be a valued member of the team and the other one was was it age the other one wasn't it the other age yes. yeah and Eric can help with it with this definitely but i mean as far as i'm aware there aren't any um restrictions anymore particularly with age are it, is there any no anyone can do an apprenticeship from the age of 16 up to the yeah. two years before you are due to retire because you need to have that time to be able to do your apprenticeship before you retire um but in terms of salary i mean we we don't we don't work with employers who pay the the apprenticeship 
minimum wage because it's too low so yeah. we we have a, a flat rate that we ask employers to commit to paying um for apprentices most um, um appre most employers um pay the london living wage um so so the salary um you know I think do 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 bear that in mind as well. Um, but yeah, age range it can be for anyone. Oh, and just the and question everyone. about the college thing. I was just going to bring that up too. Yeah, I think that's, that's really important, important because an apprenticeship provider cannot register you on an apprenticeship whilst you're still at college. So we have a lot of people that apply to us in that at college, and until your um, your college has signed you off as a student with them, and they've closed down your record, we can't we can't um, register you. So it's important if you're applying for an apprenticeship like a month before you're due to finish, you're probably okay. But anything earlier than that, and we just won't, we, it's, okay. it's just, we, it's double funding from the government. So we can't register you on an apprenticeship and get funded to deliver that apprenticeship program whilst you're still being funded via your college. And we had another question, which is really important about COVID and the impact that's having, not just for the application, is there more or are there less, but when you're doing the job and when you do the apprenticeship, um, how that's being dealt with at the moment. Um, there's definitely less because, you know, employers, some of the larger employers who have a longer term view when it comes to talent development, they will still recruit and are recruiting. Um, but the, the majority of the smaller businesses naturally um, have put their apprenticeship programs on hold for the time being and they're using kickstart for example to support young people for the minute um, in covid where we've had apprentices who have started they've started at home um, and they're working from home and we've just onboarded like seven of our apprentices at bmg um, which is a music company from home so it's not that that you can't start an apprenticeship. It just means that you're most likely going to be meeting your team virtually and working virtually. But you know, companies have set up good systems to support new starts who have been working like that. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, we have um, just a few more minutes to finish off. Uh, I do want to ask to uh, just to deliver back to the question um, that yeah. has come up quite a few times of whether it's are they all London based? And I, I'm not, you know, or or are they nationwide? I think we need to be honest about that. Um, and then finally, if we can each have a little one minute or <clears throat> 30 second, one or two liner before we say our farewells. Sure, great. Well, I mean, in terms of nationwide, there are apprenticeships, I mean, all, all over the country. Obviously, London has got some of the more, some of the bigger companies there, but I know for a fact that there are apprenticeships happening elsewhere in the country. Um, so again, just search, you, you, you use the online um, search engines, etc. find opportunities. Um, just before we I get, get everyone to summarise, um, there was one other question I really wanted to just, just touch on. Are apprenticeships available in the more practical side of the industry? Yes, there are. There are, there are apprenticeships like live event rigor. Like I said, the, the production one's coming online soon, the studio one um, as well. So do look out for those. There's um, creative venue technician as well. So there's a number of those coming through as well. And we are developing more all the time. So, so do keep your, uh, your eyes peeled. Okay, so great. Right. And did you want just a quick summary from each of us now, Sharon, was it? Yes, please. Uh, I would love to talk all afternoon. We've had a really nice bit of engagement on the chat box. And it's always one of my favorite sessions as well. But we do after all good things have to come to an end. So um, before we say our farewells, uh, I'm going to go around the screen the way I see you guys. So it's not in any particular order. I don't know if that's actually where you see each other, but um, we'll, uh, if you just give a couple last words, sage words of advice. So Leon, uh, we'll start with you from Centric Music. Yeah, totally. I mean, my experience as a, an apprentice was really, really positive. Um, and it sort of kind of narrowed down my, my kind of like, um like the point in in my life where i was like okay i'm gonna go for an apprenticeship and um, so i did keep my options open but um you know i'm just lucky that i found kind of centric um because i didn't know about just how wide the music industry is and i, I know we sort of touched on that quite a bit so absolutely do your research open your ears open your eyes um talk to people as well um like I said, you know, there's UK music, there's Korean app, there's 
Creative Society, there's the Gov UK website, just go and dive in and and learn. Might not have to apply Thank to it. Go for it. Yeah, Eric? Um, I would echo um, what Leon's just said is, is research is really important. I think if you've got anything from this session, take away that is that, you know, if you're interested in finding out the jobs, get onto the apprenticeship website and look at the um, the jobs that are listed. Get someone to look at your CV before you hit send. Um, check out UK Music website because they list different training um, courses and organisations as well as providing more you know information on the sector and what you guys are doing at career map is really good as well in terms of opening opportunities so those that have signed on to this webinar are, you know kind of a, a step ahead of those that didn't because you're you're kind of starting that research process thank you lucy we're, we're down to seconds now lucy <laughs> um again yeah just you you're already if you're here you're already taking the right um, step, you know, listen to people, like go to networking events, listen to people again and again, and um, you'll definitely get there. Uh, my apprenticeship changed my life in a way that I couldn't imagine. I work at my dream company, so I'll always be grateful to Eric for that. I love you. <laughs> <That's> um, <laughs> and, um, and yeah, you'll get there for sure. And a baby version of Paloma Faith. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that too. <laughs> Thanks. We'll just have a couple seconds from Andrew and then um, Ollie, if you want to give a wrap up. Come on down there, Andrew. Uh, yeah, just turn on that CV. Go around to as many people as you can that are offering jobs that you'll be interested in. Maybe some that you aren't interested in. Uh, yeah, just get your foot in the door, really. Show that you're willing to work hard and go the extra mile for employers. And uh, yeah, good luck with all your job searches in the future or university whatever you want to go with Definitely. Right. Right. Yeah, just, just to reiterate there's loads of ways into the industry lots of interesting parts of the industry you might not even know exist check out our website and all our members um and yeah good luck with it because it's it, it, it's genuinely a fun fun industry and if you have questions approach people generally they're, they're pretty nice pretty receptive to getting back to you uh, just but be professional and don't be too pushy Exactly. I think I would mirror that across every opportunities. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us and thank you for being so lovely and chatty. It really helps when we're having a conversation. Thank you to all of our guests. Uh, you've been watching Career Map. Just to repeat, uh, this session has been recorded. It will be up in a couple of days on careermap.co.uk forward slash Career Map Live. If you look at your chat box now, if you click the link, you can save it that way. Um, also in the files, you'll see a red dot. Uh, our lovely Jody, who's our tactician, uh, since of our little bit of a pickup of a start, has put slides with contact details for UK Music there, but you can always go onto their website. Right, so that's it for us this morning on with UK Music. Thank you, everybody, and thank you for joining us. That's all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. 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 Bye.